So this is it. This is the calculation that'll give you the big aha moment. So the way that most people invest is like this. Okay, um, let's say for example, let's play a thousand dollars, and let's say for that thousand uh, dollars, we bought a uh, hundred different units. So about ten dollars a unit is our cost. Let's say that our um, average ROI per unit is 25%, and that we expect to sell 100% of those units in that 30-day period. Uh, you can expect a 25% growth uh, for your company during that first 30 days. But what really happens is that you don't sell 100% of your units. Uh, you would only sell, let's say, for example, 90%. Now you can see your 30-day growth is at 12.5%. Then if you're kind of okay at sourcing your, and you're not a rock star and you get a couple of returns that come back in, and all of a sudden this goes down to an 80% of units that sell, now you've done a 0% growth during that 30-day period. So what most people do to combat this problem is they source at a higher average ROI. So let's go ahead and increase this average ROI to a, a 30%. Um, we're trying to combat that. Okay, great, now we're at 4%. Um, okay, well, let's try to find products where we make a minimum of a, a 50% uh, return but still you're only at a 20% growth at the end of 30 days. And we all know that it's getting harder and harder to find returns of 50% uh, or greater. So this isn't a concept that's scalable, but most people operate by this concept. So now let me flip this on its head and show you the secret of the lowballer and how they do it. So I already know the lowballer, they operate at very low ROI. So let's just go with a 20%. And if they're an average seller, they're only selling through 80% of their units, just like everybody else. But they're minding their buying power reduction, and they're going wide instead of deep on items. But they're doing one crucial thing differently. They're getting paid daily, which allows them to reinvest daily. And they're turning their capital faster because they're pricing to win the buy box most of the time. So the appropriate way to deal with the, the lower ROIs in the marketplace the fact that 100% of units don't sell all the time is that you need to start reinvesting your capital. So the low baller, they might invest uh, one more time in a month, and you see that starts improving to a 5.6. But your average low baller, they're compounding up to 10 times or even more in a month because they're getting paid every day, and they're reinvesting their capital every single day. So watch what happens when you hit just 10 compounding events. And then as you get a little bit better at sourcing, you might bring this up to an 85%, for example. You can see that your overall 30-day ROI um, is at 164%, even though you source products at small 20% ROIs. Now, the low ballers, they don't like to sit on merchandise very long, so what they're going to do is start pricing downwards. So let's start taking this ROI down percentage point. Let's go down to 19% because they're hitting buy boxes more. They're still at 150% growth. And let's say they want to do a little bit better and they uh, throw in another investment period during that 30 days and we go to 11. Now you see it jumps up to 179%. The lowballers loving it because they're, they're turning their merchandise, uh, they're turning their capital quickly, and they don't care about sacrificing individual ROI profit. They can even go down to 18% and still be good. But nobody's perfect, not even the lowballers. So they're not going to be able to invest 100% of all of their capital 11 times. Um, over that 30-day period for whatever reason you know they they might get sick one of those days or um, they just didn't have enough SKUs to turn their inventory on to uh, you know whatever the case may be so uh, we can drop that down to a 90 percent and see how that affects the numbers you could even drop that down to an 80 percent you're only reinvesting 80 percent of your capital um, on those 11 periods you're still doing almost 100 percent growth at small tiny 18 percent ROIs on an individual SKU basis so that's it that's what I wanted to show you this is the difference between the two ways that sellers invest um, most sellers invest the, the first way and they're all fooling themselves mostly into uh, how much money that they can potentially make in operating their business by that method but when you keep all the laws of the numbers in mind and you play them together in one solid strategy then you see the, the uh, potential for growth is much, much greater.